Good morning! Welcome to the second quarter of Contemporary Philippine Art from the Regions. For our most essential learning competency, it is to identify or discuss local materials in creating art. And for the objective, at the end of this lesson, you are expected to identify local materials in your on your place and make an artwork which shows you uh, which shows your experiences in life. And to review our past lesson about traditional art techniques, the contemporary art techniques. So, technique involved tools and technology. So, ranging from the most traditional like carving, weaving, analog photography, and filmmaking to the most contemporary art technique like photography, digital filmmaking, music production, industrial design, and robotics. So for today's lesson, we are going to identify local materials used in creating art. So what are those materials? Are any found objects can be used as a medium in creating art? The answer is yes. Because artist is very creative and resourceful. For an artist, any found objects are possible to be part of his or her art to make his or her subject or an obra maestra. Okay, so number one or for the first local materials that we have is Sanicula's cookie mold carving. But first discuss muna natin yung Sanicula's cookies. So, Sanicula's cookies are arrowroot cookies that have the image of St. Nicholas on it ergo the name Sanicula's. St. Nicholas is also known the healer and is the god to saint for those who need healing from illnesses. So, why this bread or these cookies is different from other cookies? So why people from different part of the country go to the place of Makabebe Pampanga just to buy and eat this kind of biscuits or biscotto. So Panicellus de San Nicolas or what we call the miraculous bread is known simply in Pampanga as San Nicolas. The cook itself is made using age old techniques and ingredients like arrowroot flour or olaro, eggs, lard, the layup or lemon rind, and coconut milk. It is one of the heirloom recipes learned by some of the older families in Pampanga from the Augustinian friars during the Spanish era. So these biscuits or biscotto have the characteristic image of San Nicolas de Tolentino, also called Apunculas embossed on its flat surface. This biscuit is usually blessed by the priests, and as such some believe that it is an effective treatment of pain as well as pampaswerte or lucky charm. So, punta naman tayo doon sa molds or molds carving. So, Sanicula's wooden molds which are used to impress the dough with a distinctive imprint. The molds always have the abstracted figure of the saint in the center, surrounded by floral, vegetal, and 
curlicue pattern as you can see in the piece in the picture Kapampang and Cook's treasure this uniquely designed wooden mold which commonly came as single block. Some have the back-to-back -back design, but most are carved with the owner's initial. Next is Pabalat or Pastillas Wrapper Cutting at in Bulacan. So, pabalat is also a folk art or in Filipino term, sining bayan. It is a folk art or because it originated among the townsfolk, reflecting their traditional culture. The art practice has also been passed from generation to generation and its creative elements and aesthetic values mirror the people everyday life. The word pabalat has two levels of meaning. On a literal note, it pertains to the pabalat as a product or paper cutouts. On a metaphorical level, it connotes the state of the art practice. The art is not only a cultural product or an artistic expression, but also cuts through some cultural, social, even political discourses and issues. So another important aspect of this folk tradition is that the makers of this intricate paper pattern do not see themselves as an artist and do not consider their work as art. Next is the taka in Laguna. So taka refers to paper mache made using carved wooden sculpture used as a mold. So the crop originated in the town of Paite, Laguna in the Philippines as well known as the carving capital of the Philippines. A taka and carve a wooden sculpture is used as a mold in making taka. Brown crop paper is used as a final layer for taka made for export. So this provides a thicker base and a smoother finish for the crop. The art of taka or taka making is not an exclusive Pinoy art. Paper mache and decoupaging have been around the centuries. Now here in the Philippines, the first recorded or mention of a created taka was by a woman named Maria Bangge in 1920s. Taka was pioneered by Paete local Maria Piday. It happened during Christmas when Piday was in charge of the church decoration. The wooden angels and cherub, and cherub was heavy, causing the carvings to fall. So Piday devised the lightweight taka paper mache as an alternative to the wooden sculpture. So what are the subjects of taka? So the common traditional subjects of taka include the manok, kabayo, kalabaw, dalaga, or chicken, horse, carabao, maiden, which is primarily for local use. And due to exposure and migration of Paite residents to Manila and abroad, European-influenced paper mache toys began to be made for export to other countries. The Paeteños believe that the idea originated in Mexico with a significant difference to what we have in Paite. So while the Mexican piñata is decorated with cut or colored paper, the Paites taka are hand-painted and are sometimes small enough for little girls to use as dolls. Next is Pagbuburda. O, unahin muna natin dito sa Lumban, Laguna. So, embroidery is the main industry of the town. And Lumban is known as the embroidery capital of the Philippines. They use fine juicy and piña cloth and embroidered by hand 
and the penis product is worn by male as Barong Tagalog and by females as Saya Filipina. So, Bordang Lumban Festival is a way to celebrate the beautiful embroideries that contribute, uh, contributed to the growth of Lumban's economy and preservation of the culture. So, next is Pagbuburda naman sa Taal, Batangas. In the highlights of Philippine history, Taal embroidery has always made an exquisite presence. So, former President Justada Macapagal and Ferdinand Marcos were usually seen in Taal embroidered barongs. A number of First Lady Imelda Marcos fabulous turners were Taal embroidered. So, Taal embroidery has also adorned garments and home decor items. Although the embroidery looks exquisite on juicy and piña fabric, it is also dainty on cotton, linen, and rami. The art of embroidery is happily alive and flourishing in these towns, Lumban and Taal. Although it's mostly done by women who are wives of farmers and fishermen, it is not uncommon to see fishermen and farmers who are also carefully and delicately embroidering floral designs during their off season. But it was great to see men doing the embroidery. So the embroider would have to slightly damp the textile and separate thread by thread and then stitch them together to achieve the dainty knitted look of Caliado embroidery next is the singtaban or bamboo art in also in Bulacan. so filipino word for decorated bamboo art is used as a welcome signage of a town city or village in the country it is widely used as a decoration during fiesta on Bulacan. So, singkaban is a local term for bamboo arches, elaborately designed with kayas. Singkaban are artfully made entrance arches used during fiestas and other important events in Bulacan. Bamboo is primarily used in creating a singkaban. And the art is most prevalent in the old towns of Hagona and Bulacan. So, singkaban also refers to sining at kalinangan ng Bulacan or arts and culture of Bulacan. Singkaban Festival is an annual provincial event of Bulacan where Bulacan culture and arts are featured in a week-long celebration. The bamboo, like the Filipino, will stand up against the wind. Sabi nga, kahit anong problema, kahit anong unos o bagyo ang dumating, naandyan pa rin tayo. Tatayo at aharapin ang hamon ng buhay. Next is puni of fan folding, also in Bulacan. So, Bulacanus way of decorating using leaf fronts folding. The art of leaf fronts folding in Bulacan, Robins, Philippines. Puni, a Tagalog term from the province of Bulacan, which means to beautify or decorate with the use of coconut leaf. Coconut leaves are fashioned by folding, plating, braiding, and simple weaving, which may have functional as well as aesthetic uses. Puno design can be categorized according to their uses, and the most common designs are in the form of toys, such as birds, fish, grasshopper, and many others. They also use as a food containers for suman, rice, and various kakanin. The most commonly known is the puso. And also falafernalia for religious rituals, especially during Fang Sunday, 
when these designs are used to accentuate the, pala the palaspas. Today, they serve as a modern artistic expression and arrangement. The art is being revived through practical ways by preserving, developing, and transforming these pony designs into decorative pieces used as decors, accessories, and as accent for various arrangements or wraps. The Bulacanio pioneered the revival of this ephemeral art, at least in our country. The present collection and compilation of Puni designs is a result of continuous research, mostly skill sharing and exchange, along with contribution of various individuals dedicated to revive this banishing art. So that's all for our local materials used in creating arts. Do you know someone who do the same or has a unique art using other local materials? Okay. So our next is an activity. For our activity, you're going to make or weave an easy piece and just follow the instruction below. So for the output and video, attach it in your classwork. So again, I'm Teacher Rose saying, share your love to everybody and be a blessing to everyone. See you next meeting and thank you.